Direct examination is the lawyer's opportunity to ask questions of a witness who uh, the lawyer themselves is calling as their witness, which just means that it's a witness who they think will be helpful to their case. And when a lawyer is conducting direct examination, they really want to ask the witness questions to allow the witness to tell the whole story and allow the witness to be what you might think of as the star of the show and someone who can really explain to the judge what happened. The key to direct examination for the lawyer is to use open-ended questions and the best way to think about that is really questions that begin with who, what, where, when, and why. And that allows the witness to be the one who gives the information rather than the lawyer. Good morning, Your Honor. My name is Mr. Bozes, and I will be conducting the direct examination of Constable Rachel DeCarlo. <coughs> All right, go ahead. Can you please state your name for the court? Rachel DeCarlo. And what is your current profession? I am a Toronto, I am enforced by the Toronto Police Service. And what division are you located at? 13 Division. Where is this, uh, sorry, where is 13 Division located? It is located near Eglinton Avenue in Toronto. I see you have brought your police notes with you. Were they written at the time of the event? Yes, they were. And are they in your own handwriting? Yes, they are. Are they in pen or pencil? They're in pen. Have you made any additions, deletions, or corrections? None at all. Do you have an independent recollection of the events? I do. And do you need your notes to refresh your memory? Yes, I do. Your Honor, may Constable DiCarlo use her notes to refresh her memory? Does the defense have any objections to uh, the constable using her notes to refresh your memory? No, Your Honor, no objections. Thank you. I'm going to take you back to the evening of March 10th, 2010. <coughs> what were you doing at approximately 7 o'clock p.m.? Um, at about 7 o'clock, I was called down to, in, to inspect a, an assault and a robbery near Eglinton Avenue. Can you describe the crime scene and its surroundings? Um, well, about 10 meters before the... Um, the alleyway there was a lamp post facing down and there was also ample lighting from um, surrounding buildings from the alleyway. And after you investigated at the crime scene, what was the next stage in your investigation? Well, um, the next day on March 10th, I went to, sorry, I'm sorry, March 11th, I was called down to the hospital to um, see the, um, the victim, Andrew Williams, in hospital. And can you describe the appearance of Mr. Williams at the time of the interview? Um, well, he was bruised, um, black eyes, broken nose. Um, he was bandaged up on his ribs and lying on the hospital bed. And what happened during this interview? Well, I f obtained a full report from Mr. Williams. After the interview, what happened next in your investigation? Um, on April 9th, I received a phone call from the principal of Tomorrow Secondary School and she was calling regarding an, in, um, an individual at the school. Just one moment, please. Objection, Your Honor. And what is the basis for your objection? Um, the evidence um, is hearsay. All right, any uh, response? Yes, Your Honor. Um, this is basically part of the narrative as to why Donovan Tizzi is a suspect and why he was further sought out to be questioned. And also, this, the rumors aren't going to be used for the truth of the matter. It's just basically for the narrative as to why he was suspected. All right, I'm prepared to admit the evidence as part of the narrative to explain uh, the officer's actions and what happened, but not for the, proof, uh, not for the truth of the contents. Thank Go you, ahead. Honor. Thank you. All right. So, okay. And uh, why did the principal contact you? Well, she contacted me because there was a student at the school and there's rumors about this student that they had assaulted and robbed uh, a, young, a younger youth earlier on and stole their basketball shoes. And who was the student in question? It was Donovan Tizzi. Was any further action taken? Yes, um, to see and to clarify whether or not Donovan Tizzi was in the alleyway, I made a photo lineup so I and Rick could pick out whether or not Donovan was in it. And. How did you construct this photo lineup? Um, well, basically the photo lineup had six individuals, all male, and they had similar characteristics um, such as jaw jawline, facial fi uh, features, hair color, eye color, and skin tone. And did Mr. William recognize anyone in this photo lineup? Yes, um, he picked out his first choice was Donovan Tizzi. Okay. And 
What happened on April 10th, 2010? Well, um, I went to the apartment building of Donovan Tizzy to um, ask him a few questions, and outside of the apartment, I did find a pair of basketball shoes that matched the exact description of Andrew Williams' stolen basketball shoes. And can you describe these basketball shoes? Well, they were high tops, and they were black, white, and red. Your Honor, may I please approach the witness? Go ahead. Are these the basketball shoes that you obtained? Yes, they are. Your Honor, may these be entered as an exhibit as the witness has identified them as the stolen goods? Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Go ahead. Those will be entered as an exhibit then. And what happened next after you entered the apartment complex? Well, I arrested Donovan Tizzy for assault causing bodily harm and for robbery. And um, as we were leaving the apartment, I picked up the basketball shoes and put them in a sealed evidence uh, bag. And I put them in my locker until I brought them to court today as evidence. Okay, no further questions, Your Honor. <laughs>